Good afternoon or good evening boys and girls and welcome to episode 61 of Love at First Scent with me Persil Ace, coming to you today live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you are tuning in live, thank you very much for watching. If you're watching the recording, um, I'll get the usual things out of the way like saying, you, you know, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Please consider giving me uh, thumbs up and hearts and likes and all the rest of it. Uh, ask questions, leave comments, etc, etc. I will just do the usual and go onto the tablet to make sure that I am coming through. I must be to at least one person because Fahmi says hello, a huge hello to you as well. And also very briefly, uh, the plan for today is that we are doing a short video, uh, one focusing on one or two perfumes, so episode 61 will be a quickie, but then after a pause of about five or ten minutes we will go straight into episode 62 and we will make it one of the sort of now old-fashioned longer ones where we actually sit down together, relax, maybe have a chat, smell a few perfumes and even do a vintage perfume, but I will talk more about that when we actually get round to episode 62. So that, that's the plan. A short one followed by a long one. If you can stay tuned for both, that's fantastic. If you can't, don't worry. Anyway, the plan for this one is uh, the, the sharp-eyed amongst you may have realised that actually the perfumes that I've got next to me here are two perfumes that were next to me when we were doing the previous episode, episode 60, because we were looking at two of the new releases in the Armani Privé um, range. They've released four scents in their Les O collection, and we looked at the Jasmine and the Tea scent. But I had such a massive response. By the way, I'm not ignoring comments, okay? I will get to them in a second. I had such a massive response to uh, that episode with lots and lots of people saying you have to do the other two, you certainly have to do the rose one, that I thought, why not? You know, who's, who's to say that I can't just carry on from one episode to the other with the same brand and the, and, and the same range? So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to smell uh, probably both of them. I think we may as well do both of them because it would be a shame to do three and, 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 and leave one out. The curious thing about the feedback that most of you left was that so many of you chose to do it privately by email, which is absolutely fine with me, but it's, 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 it's several people left comments on the video as well or contacted me on social media in a public forum, but a lot of you also sent um, emails because because you don't want anybody else to see that you're communicating, which is, which, is, which is perfectly okay. I mean, I'm actually probably the most circumspect and private person I know. I, I, I know that doesn't necessarily tie in with the fact that I do live videos from my house, but, but there we are. Okay. So before we get to it, and, and I will try to do both, I think we'll start with the gardenia and then maybe we'll do the rose. Uh, comment. So Fahmi says hello. Hello to you as well. Greetings for Annette from Annette from Chicago. Amazing. Uh, Eric says hello from Houston, Texas. Rachel says good afternoon from Cornwall. Um, they Pacific or is it Tay Pacific? Hello, they're finally caught alive. Fantastic. Uh, Ashfaq says good evening, Persilays. An Etro shirt. Uh, uh, no. In fact, I don't know what it is. Um, but I know it's definitely not Etro because I don't think I own anything by Etro, so there we are. Um, but presumably that means you think it's nice. I don't know. I do like Etro clothes when I see them, but no, I don't own any. Hello from Huddersfield says, is that doc is that meant to be Dr. Fires? Uh, hello from rainy London. Yeah, pretty rainy down here on the south coast as well. Seattle saying hello. Uh, hello from Taipei says Aperol Spritz. Angeline says hello. And Peggy says hi, a happy Chinese New Year. Yes, absolutely. And I think special uh, special good thoughts to to everybody in China. Obviously, that 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 country is um, not having the happiest time at the moment. So let's all just sort of take a few seconds out to send good good thoughts to to everybody in China and everything that's happening over there. But let us smell this one. So uh, the two that we have left over from the Armani Privé collection we tried last time are the Gardenia and the Rose. And I thought we'd try with the Gardenia. So this is Gardenia Antigua. Um, I forget who made it, but I remember from reading the press release to you last time that all of the others were made by women. The Jasmine was made by Dominique Ropion and the other three were made by women. But we will look at the press release again and find out who made them. So here we go. Now Gardenia is, um, it, 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 it is a tough one and the idea, the idea of a of a of a light gardenia, that is sort of Ashfaq saying a challenging flower to pull off. Absolutely, the idea of of a light 
Uh, oh, Tashara says hello from Colombo. Hi. Uh, hello from Milwaukee. First live broadcast says Kim Dawson Brooks. This is, I just love that, you know, we've, we've just covered so much of the globe already. I, I'm, I know I keep saying this, but I'm, I never cease to be amazed by this. Um, the whole point of gardenia, of course, is that it is really quite a funky white flower with a very, very, very pronounced um, fungal mushroomy note. Um, so I'm guessing that because this is meant to be one of the, you know, one of the the, the, the watery, um, <coughs> one of one of the watery additions to the Armani Privé collection, that they're, it, it's kind of not going to have a lot of time for those sorts of notes. Uh, so I think we ought to expect a light sheer gardenia. There will be a blotter update, by the way, uh, a few hours after the end of this broadcast. So let's see, let's see what the gardenia is like, and then we will look at the press release. Um, never know which way around they're meant to go. I think I think the I love gardenia, but I don't recall smelling a great perfume with it. Says Eric. Check out um, uh, Andy Towers. That was a very nice gardenia, um, and also um, Arquiste's Boutonnier number. And I always forget the number. Is it number nine or is it number seven? And um, it's probably number seven because it always makes me think of Boots number seven. Anyway. Ooh. Do you know? Wow, this is this is this is actually quite retro-y. Um, oh, this is really going to bug me for a while now because it's Im I'm immediately back in the eighties, which was which was a feeling I didn't get at all with with the jasmine and the tea. Um, they felt they felt much more modern because I think they were much more translucent and transparent. But this is this is quite grand, um, unexpectedly so. Um, D dare I say it? There's almost the sort of kind of feel of of Amarige. Uh, the best gardenia tried so far is Jardin de Borneo gardenia from Sultan Pasha. Says Ashwag, it has a very rare and beautiful oud in it. Okay, any similarity with Chanel gardenia? Says Tushara. Uh, not at first scent. No. Uh, I did forget the tower. Says Eric. I love it, but the gardenia isn't always at the forefront. Um. Yeah. I, fair enough. I, I have to actually re-smell it before I decide firmly whether I agree with that or not. But this is... Okay, I'll tell you the first impression I get from it is that it isn't actually specifically a gardenia, but it is more of a sort of symphonic floral. And I guess symphor symphonic florals make us automatically think of 80s. Um, there's a suggestion here of Estee Lauder's beautiful uh, which is, you know, quite a comparison to make because I think Beautiful is one of the most fra amazing fragrances of all time. I forget whether it's actually 80s though, or did that come in the very, very early 90s? Beautiful is 80s, isn't it? I think it is. Um, but the, 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 the fact that... And it's making me think a lot of Sophia Groisman fragrances because it seems to have a strong block of musks in the bottom and then all of these florals doing, you know, in, in harmony, in harmony, playing a single chord. And and I suppose because of that, it also reminds me of the work that Jean-Claude Elena did for Hermès on Jour d'Hermès, which, which was also a kind of, the whole point with Jour, if you remember, was that it was supposed to be the idea of floralness without any single flower being specifically identifiable. But then curiously, the flanker that they did to that focused on gardenia. Um, I'll be very, very curious to see how this goes. It's so. So what do we get? It, it's grand, much more epic than I thought um, anything in the Lezo collection would be. Very, very overtly feminine. You know, it's this sort of somebody in an amazing, dramatic, single color dress with long hair sweeping down a staircase. You may be almost at like, you know, one of Gatsby's parties. Although no, it's, it's probably too elegant for one of Gatsby's parties. Um, it isn't, yeah, it, 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 this isn't, this isn't, this isn't decadent. This is actually quite, quite elegantly well behaved. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised and impressed, which is, which is, um, which is which is always a good thing, actually. I've I've neglected to check out a few comments here. Uh, so we had 
Uh, Eric says, I love Sophia Grossman. Guess I'm, I'm going smelling this weekend. Yes, I think, I think they're out uh, at the beginning of February. Um, so you don't need to wait very long. Uh, Ashwag says, haven't tried the tower yet, so we'll sample it. Love Gardenia. We have quite a few in our rooftop garden. Mm, very nice. Do you know of all the places where you can sometimes get Gardenia in Ikea? You, you get the most extraordinary plant sometimes at Ikea. And, some, and, and, and if you're lucky, you can actually get a Gardenia that's blooming. So you don't even have to buy it. You can just smell it at, at the shop. And, and you always, always get that mushroomy note, that fungal note, which, which isn't here. I mean, at least that is, is, is what we'd expected. As Schwarz says, Gardenia, at least the absolute, varies quite a lot on skin compared to on a blotter. Yes, which is, which is actually a perfect moment for me to say, you know, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, when I say that we do a blotter update, a few hours after the live broadcast, um, I add to the um, video description below, which you should find below, I add a little bit of an update on how the scents developed on the blotter because we need to bear in mind that we are not smelling these on skin, we are smelling them on paper, and so we also need to make sure that we take, we give some consideration to how they develop on, uh, on the blotter. And wherever possible, I also do try to smell them on skin. And if I do that quite close to the initial broadcast, then I may even leave a comment in the video description about how they've developed on, on um, skin. But this is, this is, this is, this is 80s in, in a good way. Okay, let's see what the press release says about it. So, I won't read the general description of this particular range. If you'd like me to, 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 to if, if, you, if you'd like to hear what the, uh, the introduction to press release, to the press releases, then try and find episode 60. I will try, I will do my best to link to episode 60 in the uh, video description below. So, what have we got? Gardenia Antigua, a vaporous musky breeze. Okay, musky is true. Superb celebration of the gardenia flower. Gardenia antica is infused with a pure, intense, and sophisticated light, echoing Armani's haven of peace, Antigua Island. Reinterpreted by perfumer Dora Bagrish of Firminish, the floral icon unveils its sunny and powdery facets through the most beautiful floral nuances. The scent opens with notes of mandarin and neroli essences. In the heart, the gardenia unites with milky, voluptuous and addictive accents. The dry down unleashes elegance and voluptuousness with patchouli essence, ambrox and white musk notes. An exquisite composition of raw materials, Gardenia Antigua subtly translates the beauty of the Caribbean island with the delicate, sunny and powdery notes of island flowers. And I suppose that tropical feel, you know, you could also say that maybe you're getting something of Annick Goutal's uh, Songe, which, 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 which goes much more in a kind of jasmine direction, but that, that lactonic, musky, maybe slightly coconut. Angel there you go. Angeline says, is there a TRA note? Maybe not specifically, but it's that kind of thing. Um, so, so yes, I suppose to that image that I just described, we could, we, could, we could add a little flower stuck in someone's ear. Would be interested on the blotter update how much of the patchouli is detected. Yes, good point. And... Uh, <laughs> Floating man is saying to Ashfaq, who needs perfumes when you live in the jungles of Bangladesh? <laughs> well, I suppose you can't really... <laughs> yeah, lol, exactly. Thank you. I can't, I can't say anything better than that. Um, hmm, intriguing. So, that, 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 was, that was a good start to this video. I think we should move swiftly on to the rose to see what that is like. Um, I saved the rose... I'm, I'm, I am actually, um, I am actually a sucker for rose, um, and, it, and, and it, rose is an easy sell for me usually, but, uh, but it also has to be fairly convincing. So this is, this is the pink hued rose Milano from um, Armani Privé. I'm only slowing down here because I know I will need a thumbnail for this video, my usual slowing down and smiling sweetly for the thumbnail. Anyway, I think that's enough of that. Let's get another blotter. Let's find out what the rose is like. Uh, I hope after this surprising gardenia, the rose is a grand one, says Eric. See, well, I'm not, I wasn't expecting grand from these because they are meant to be the, you know, les all. Peggy says, let, please let the rose be good, yeah. Because they're actually, if, so far they've been, they've been, you know, these three have been all right, actually. I bought some very rare Taif Rose Otto directly from a distiller while in Saudi Arabia, says Ashfaq. What was that like? That must have been amazing. Okay, let's see. 
Oh, okay. Um, wow, what is that note in there? <laughs> dead, dead, dead air there for a moment, because, because yes, there's definitely rose, but, but there's something else too. Uh, okay, articulate Persiles. The opening of this is much more what I would have expected from this range, in the sense that it's not, it's not huge. Uh, it. It, it is much lighter, it's it's much more sheer, um, not as weighty as some roses. I mean, you know, this is, this is, you can tell this is not going to be Portrait of a Lady or anything like that. But right next to the rosiness, what on earth is that? I hope the press release is going to tell me because at the moment I can't move my finger on it. I don't know whether it's a berry note. Th this, I think you can tell, is also going to go into musky, a, a very, very musky dry down, but maybe a sort of sweeter, more shampoo musk. Watery rose to Sharon. Well, possibly, but that's not what I'm getting. Um, it's almost, oh. There's almost something dry there, like maybe it's a particular woody note that Really, no. That that's that's quite intriguing because I think what they've done is, if you think of the usual descriptors that you would associate with rose, okay, so you would associate peppery, honeyed, milky, creamy. Um, this this is rosy, and yet it's maybe fruity, but but in a dry kind of way. I need sorry. I'm I'm gonna. I'm, I need to. I need to see if if the press release helps with this, because because I'm intrigued now. Uh, rose, Rose, Rose. Rose Milano, a joyful floral celebration, a contrasting fragrance in which delicacy and boldness come face to face. Rose Milano is a tribute to Milanese elegance, offering a new interpretation of rose. While the enveloping petal scents of rose absolute are uplifted by earthy, smoky notes of patchouli and moss, they are softened by sublime fruity notes. Okay, but don't just say fruity because there's something I mean you know it's not peach it's not apple maybe it's something really really sharp like like black currant um I'm this is intriguing perfect transcription of Italian joyful sounds composed dodgy translation there Rose Milano opens with a luminous citrus and floral play filled with colors at the at the heart of this effervescence created by Daphne Bouget and Marie Salamagne, the sublime rose signs a timeless and urban sheep accord. Dear me, I, th I think somebody needed to check the translation there, but... Or maybe it's the combo of the fruit with the patchouli that... This is this is intriguing. I have to say, this is intriguing. And, and you know, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that I can detect something when I can't. I think, I think this will need some skin time. And, and actually she, pr she pr could be right because, because it's got a kind of dryness and the patchouli is coming through now. Hmm, more, more, um, it's, it's turning out to be more sophisticated than, than the opening would have suggested. Uh, comments that I've missed. Black Current says Forever Fragrant Kid. Yes, yeah, possibly. Yuzu says Peggy. No, 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 nothing, nothing like that. Um, not that I got anyway. Hmm. So these these two today have um, been unexpected. I think maybe the rose might turn out to be somewhat insubstantial compared to the gardenia. The gardenia, the gardenia is not bad, you know. But but the rose is rose patchouli in a portrait of a lady way. If you can think of that, but with like, well, first of all, none of the incense and and a lot of the drama taken out. Mind you, portrait of a lady has a kind of berryish note at the top as well. We'll have to see how it develops. We will have to see how it develops. But um, but overall, has to be said, well done, Armani. Um, Angeline says they don't seem very O-like. No, these two, no, not, not, not particularly. 
The jasmine and the tea absolutely were very much more what you would have expected from an O. But um, well done, Armani, for giving us these four that have actually caused us to scratch our heads a little bit in a, in a, in a, in a good way. Uh, so yes, uh, blotter update coming a few hours probably uh, after the end of this broadcast, possibly maybe even tomorrow, depending on, on the, how the time goes. Um, in about five or ten minutes time, I will come back with episode 62 of, of Love at First Scent, where we will actually take our time and smell a few perfumes from a few different brands. You know, we'll do one of those sort of slower ones where hopefully we will get the chance to interact a little bit more. We will do a vintage scent as well. But for now, thank you very much for tuning in. Bye. <laughs>